If you're preparing to give birth, you probably have some concerns about pain. Everyone knows that getting an epidural is an option if you give birth in the hospital, but there's a lot of misinformation floating around the internet. Do they always work? Do they slow labor down? Can they paralyze you? Today, we're going to go over the actual risks, benefits, and most frequently asked questions about this pain management option. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently 37 weeks pregnant with my second baby. Because my preference is to give birth at home, I did not get an epidural with my first baby, and I don't plan on getting one with this one either. However, I will admit that when I started seriously thinking about labor a few weeks ago, the thought did cross my mind, well, what if I did get an epidural this time? The problem is, I know from my medical history that an epidural probably wouldn't work for me. And honestly, that's the biggest risk with an epidural. It might not work. This is more likely if you have a history of spine surgery, which I do, or if you have a higher BMI, especially a BMI over 50. That being said, sometimes epidurals don't work, and we don't always know why. Some mamas will only be able to get numb on one side of their body, or some will have just this window that no matter what we do, we cannot get it numb. In those scenarios, we can usually call anesthesia to replace your epidural, but that doesn't always work. I find anesthesia usually has a more difficult time placing epidurals in bigger mamas, so if you do have a higher BMI, you can still opt for an epidural, but it may take multiple placement attempts. Risk number two is that it may slow your labor down, especially if you're a first-time mom. There was a very misleading study published a few years ago that concluded that epidurals don't slow your labor down, they just increase your need for Pitocin. Pitocin is the medication that we give to help your contractions get stronger and closer together, and odds are if we're giving it, something has slowed your labor down. There's an entire childbirth rabbit hole you can go down on the internet called the Cascade of Interventions, and it frequently starts with getting an epidural. You get an epidural in early labor, your contractions space out, and so we start Pitocin to get your contractions closer together. But then we have a hard time monitoring your baby, and we have to place internal monitors, a fetal scalp electrode, and an intrauterine pressure catheter to monitor contractions. This increases your risk for infection. Ultimately, if we can't get you back into a good contraction pattern, then you have an increased risk of needing a C-section. It is worth noting that this risk is significantly lower if you've given birth vaginally before. Most of the time, if it's not your first baby and you choose to get an epidural, if it slows your labor down, which it's less likely to, your provider can typically just break your water and get your contractions closer together that way without the need for multiple interventions. The other thing that increases your risk for a C-section is that epidurals can make pushing take a lot longer, again, especially if you're a first-time mom. First-time moms without an epidural usually won't push longer than 60 to 90 minutes, and a lot of times they'll even push for less than 30 minutes. If you choose to get an epidural and it's your first baby, you need to be mentally prepared to push for three hours. This is because you are not going to be able to feel the urge to push as strongly as someone without an epidural. Your pushes also probably aren't going to be quite as effective. I have seen a lot of women end up with vacuum-assisted births just because they were completely exhausted from pushing. If you do ask for a vacuum and we can't get your baby out with one, then your only option is for a C-section. And I don't want it to sound like I'm judging anyone for having a vacuum-assisted birth or a C-section. I just know that most mamas want to avoid that. The fourth risk with an epidural is the risk for a spinal headache. A spinal headache is when a membrane in your spinal cord is accidentally punctured during the placement of your epidural, and then later when your epidural is removed, you get the worst headache of your life. This is not a common occurrence. It happens in about one out of every 100 women, and sometimes even less frequently than that. If this does happen, usually the anesthesia provider knows right away and can warn you. It does not complicate your birth, but the spinal headache will set in postpartum after your epidural catheter has been removed. Women with spinal headaches usually can't tolerate sitting up and will have to spend most of their time laying down. If this does happen to you, the anesthesiologist can do a procedure called a blood patch to try and fix it. This doesn't always work, and worst case scenario, you have a really bad headache for up to a week postpartum. All right, enough doom and gloom. Let's talk about the benefits of epidurals before we move on to frequently asked questions. If you found this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up. The number one benefit of an epidural is, of course, effective pain relief. If you want to feel as little as possible during your labor and birth, an epidural is your best bet. There are other pain medications available in a hospital, like IV pain medication or sometimes laughing gas, 
but none of them are going to come even close to the amount of relief you're going to get from an epidural. Sometimes an epidural can actually help your labor progress. If you've been in labor for a long time and you're stuck around that five centimeter mark, sometimes getting an epidural will just cause your pelvic floor to relax in a way that you can make really rapid progress. The kicker is you're not going to know if it's going to help speed things up or slow things down until you actually try it. The other benefit is that it can help you get some sleep. If you're one of those mamas that's been in prodromal labor for days before active labor hits and you just want a good nap, an epidural is the best way to make that happen. Moving on to frequently asked questions. Number one, will the epidural make you paralyzed if you move while they're placing it? Nope. This rumor was started decades ago and has persisted to this day. When is the best time to get an epidural? Most providers, including myself, will recommend waiting until you're around five centimeters. This is because that's when most women are moving from early labor to active labor, and so there's less of a risk of the epidural slowing things down. That being said, usually you can get one whenever you want. When is it too late to get an epidural? I tell my patients if they can't control the urge to push, it's probably too late. This urge is going to vary from person to person. Some women will start to feel pushy around 7 centimeters. Others won't feel the urge to push until after they've hit 10 centimeters. If you're starting to feel that urge, it's going to be really difficult to sit still for an epidural. And odds are, if we sit you up to place one, you're probably just going to birth your baby. Can I get a walking epidural? Nope. This is not a thing for labor, and even though you will see various websites mention it, I do not know of a single hospital that actually offers this service. If you can feel enough to walk, you're probably not getting effective pain relief. Will it make me completely numb? This varies from person to person. Our goal is that you can still feel pressure when it's time to push, and some women do not find that pressure sensation very tolerable. Some women can't feel anything when it's time to push, and that makes the pushing process a lot more challenging. If you have epidural questions that I didn't cover, please drop them in the comments. This video is not intended to replace a conversation with your healthcare provider. If this is an option that you're considering, you should definitely go over risks and benefits with your provider. I just wouldn't wait until you're in labor to go over them. In the coming weeks, I'm going to post videos about prepping your house for a home birth and making a birth plan. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss those uploads. Thank you so much for watching.